Hi, my name is Laura and I was asked to make an instructional video on my plumeria that I had created for my ukulele. Um, I have never done this before, so be gentle and patient. I'll do my best. Um, these are the items that I need. Close. And I'll show you how you can make your own. This one, same thing here. A uh, slightly darker green leaf on this. And they're real simple to put on. It's just an elastic. It'll fit right over the headstock. I like it at a slight angle, one diagonal. So I strapped it on on the diagonal. And I'll do my best. Hang tight. Here are the items that you'll need. First off, a sheet of foam. I bought that at the craft store. They have lots of different colors, um, primary colors, bright colors. Um, I bought white to stick with the traditional color of the plumeria, a pair of scissors, a paintbrush, some paint, acrylic. Um, I used yellow to stick with the traditional color of the plumeria, green ribbon for the leaves, glue, I used a hot glue gun, an iron, or you can also use a hair straightener, a marking tool or pencil. Here I have used a Phillips head screwdriver, but a pencil will work, or uh, if you don't want to leave a, a mark, you can use anything that will cause an impression in the foam. A hair tie or any round piece of elastic. Small pearls are optional, or just a small bead if you'd like. Needle and thread, and the petal template. Let's get started. So we are going to make the petals for the flower. Um, make sure you wash your hands if you're using white foam because it will pick up any grime or grit that you have on your hands. Um, this is a piece of foam that I've already been working with. So I'm going to work from there. I've made a template for the petals that I'd like. Now I noticed that the plumeria also have a, a more pointed version and if you'd like to do that you can. I like the rounded one, or the more flat edge, so that when I um, bend the petal, it just has a, a nice rounded edge. Um, but it's whatever you like. The petal that I made is about the size of a guitar pick. Um, you can make petals any size you like for whatever size flower. The first one I made, I did make bigger, but I did find that I wanted a smaller flower for uh, embellishing the ukulele if I wanted to have more than one. So, as I said, we'll trace, we're going to trace the petal on the foam. We're going to make five petals. Using a pencil is absolutely fine, but I did find then that you had to be careful about how you were cutting out your petals. You had to make sure to cut on the inside line of the pencil, and it could be a pain in the neck. Um, if I use a screwdriver, and this is just a Phillips head screwdriver, a little screwdriver, it leaves enough of an impression on the foam that I just have an indentation I can follow. I can cut it out that way, and I don't have to worry about any pencil marks. So first we'll make our five and five um, petals. The petals are all traced. Okay, there's one petal, and we'll do that four more times. Five done. So we have our five petals. They're all cut out. 
five petals per flower. And now I'm heating up the iron. You can use the iron. I have a very cheap iron. It does the trick for what we're going to do. Uh, I hate to iron, so I don't have anything special. You can also use a straight iron for your hair. I liked it for part of the shaping. I didn't like the, the flat iron for another part of the shaping. I felt like I was going to burn myself, but you can certainly use whatever you like as long as it gets nice and warm. So we'll see. Good, we're here. First thing we'll do, let's see how close I can get, is we'll take the petal, hold it on the iron for two to three seconds, take it off, and now it's nice and soft, and we'll just curve it. Hold it there for a moment, and it will cool. And there you have a curved petal. How easy was that? Now we'll do that for the other five, the other four. bent. Okay. The next thing we need to do on the left side of the petal, the left edge has a little bit of a curl to it. So heat just the left side of the petal. And then give it a little curl. And if you make a mistake, just reheat it and do it again. It takes me a little time for some reason. It might be a better way. And following my statement before about whatever side you're heating it tends to fold upon itself. I have a hard time heating it on the convex side. Getting fancy. Uh, because of the first curve I made. So there. Now we've made a little curve. My petal. Oh I know it's hard. It's white. huh? See how I can show the curve the best. It's curved a little bit. So we have to do that to each of the petals. One down, four to go. So it's a long story as to how and why I got interested in playing the ukulele. And I have to give a shout out to Cynthia Lynn and all her patrons, of which I am one. And someone had mentioned wanting to make a lay for their ukulele. And they were not terribly costly, but costly enough for something small that, that I guess someone felt they could make them themselves. And it got me interested in how I could make one for myself. So I played, and this is what I came up with. There's probably lots of different ways. I know there's a way with ribbon. Um, which is kind of cool. I like the foam, it made it a bit durable, more durable. Although I do make the leaves out of, oops, let's see, I don't mean to block your view. 
trying very hard to make this work. Again, forgive me, first time I've ever done anything like this. It may be the last, too. So because people were writing about them, they're experimenting and wanting to try, I thought I would try as well and surprised myself and it turned out pretty well. So I posted a picture on some of the different ukulele sites and people were asking for a YouTube video, so here it is. Okay, so now we have all five of our petals. I'm going to turn off the iron. We arrange ourselves here a little bit. Okay, so here are our five pieces. Okay, with the, left, the curl on the left side. And now what we need to do is heat up our glue gun. So far pretty easy, right? Totally manageable. We'll take one of the pieces and on the flat edge, you will put some of your glue. And you know, I suppose you can use different kinds of glue. I have not tried. <laughs> Where are you? I haven't tried. Oh, focus. There, that's kind of cool. It's almost extreme close-up, isn't it? Yeah. So on those straight edges, a little glue, and me pull that down a little bit. Do try and get the points to meet so you don't have a hole at the bottom of your flower or too big of an overlap, either way. And if you can, be as careful as you can about the glue because you're gonna paint the inside a little bit and the, and the glue will take up the paint a little differently than the foam. I'll wait for a moment and make sure that's really sealed. Oh, be very careful with your nails. Um, they do tend to, if you push hard enough, leave a, an impression in the foam. Okay, so that's what we have so far. There's our five petals. We just have to close it off. So, last part on the edge. And... Close it up. Oh, I've got all kinds of noises happening here. Close it and hold it. Just make sure it cools. Clean up any mess. So far, awesome. I shocked myself the first time I did this. I put it together and I went, look, it really does look like a flower. Okay, so that works. Now we'll take our paint and the plumeria has a little bit of yellow on the center. And I give a shout out to my friend David in, in Massachusetts who grows plumeria in his backyard and sent me a picture, I'll attach it on here. You can see the pretty yellow on the inside of the white flower. Now, 
think the last part that I will do, you let that dry, but I'm going to be impatient. And I just did this for the heck of it. Got, got these little tiny pearls from another project. Everything with the exception of the foam was left over from another project. Um, so I had these little pearls. And I thought they would be kind of cute inside. So I know it's not quite dry, but instead of hanging out and coming back, put a dab of hot glue in there. And then I put the little pearl. Totally not necessary and actually not um, anatomically. Is, is it the anatomy of the flower anatomically correct? for plumeria because they don't have any thing in the center like that but I thought that made it kind of neat. So there's, there you go. Just like that. Easy enough. Um, I'll show you how to make uh, the leaves. Be right back. Okay so for the leaves I just bought some green ribbon the first one I made, I actually used a lighter green ribbon, and I liked it, although then when I saw the real plumeria, at least the one I saw, had a really deep green, so I was trying to be more accurate, uh, but you can use whatever color you like. This green happens to, this satin ribbon happens to have a wire, a thin wire running on each side. Completely not necessary, but I couldn't find one without. So what you'll do is take a strip, Oh, again, it can, it doesn't really matter. Let's say it's four inches, maybe. Cut the ribbon, put that aside. Um, when I work with ribbon, I'm concerned about these ends. So I will actually burn the end so that it doesn't fray. Now this particular piece of ribbon has a satiny, shiny side and a more dull back. Uh, again, you can have whichever side you like. In fact, hmm, I might like the more dull side. I'm going to try that. Um, so whatever side you want to be showing, you will fold in. I'm going to use the more dull side, so I'm going to fold it in. I'm just curious. I'm going to try. So you fold that in half, and no fancy stitches here at all, thank goodness, because I don't enjoy doing this. Um, you're just going to go back and forth in your mouth, all along one side. Pull through nice and tight. And I probably have really cheap thread here, so I'm going to be very careful. And then secure that off. And you all probably know how to do this a lot better than I do. I just don't have the patience for it. Lots of other things, yes. This sewing, no. Embroidery, I don't mind. But sewing, not so much. So you'll clip that. And then flip it. And there's your leaf. Okay. Now I didn't so these two ends together, you can, it depends on how you want to attach it. I left those straight ends because I used the elastic, used to, to wrap 
around the elastic. But there's a leaf. And there is our plumeria and leaf. And you can make the leaves bigger or smaller, whatever you like. There you have it. And as many as you like, you can attach them. You can sew through the foam. In fact, the first one I made, I sewed through and went through the bead, went through the little pearl, and came out the other side. And that's how I attached the pearl. You just have to be careful on the size of the head of the needle that it's small enough to go through the, the pearl or bead that you want to put in there, if you want to put one in. But hot gluing it did the trick just fine. Um, and so you can take these and sew them or hot glue them to whatever you'd like. To do the ukulele lay, I made three plumeria and two leaves. I put the leaves on each side and the three flowers. I'll get it and show you. Here's to do the lay. I made three of those flowers. Again, you could make one. You could do whatever you like. That's the beauty of it. And I just sewed them onto a hair elastic. Again, sewing, not my favorite thing, <laughs> but I was able to accomplish it. Um, each of the flowers is attached to the ribbon and so it is attached to the hair tie. And I didn't sew through the hair tie so that they could stretch and move to be able to reach over the headstock. So actually all those things slide on the hair ribbon. But there you have it. Good luck. Let me know if it works for you. Show me your pictures of how your ukulele turned out now. And I suppose you could wear it in your hair too. It's just a hairband. It's just a hair tie. But the flowers look pretty real. I was impressed. Um, take care. Good luck. Check out my other they're not tutorials, just my other videos on my channel. And maybe you'll be surprised at what other things I do. Bye!